Sea Circle Calendar October 1506, Ron Island, the sea area under the jurisdiction of the Whitebeard Pirates. This is an island that is not very big in the New World. A huge white crescent bearded skull flag hangs high on the tallest building on the island, indicating that this place is protected by Whitebeard and only needs to pay a certain amount of money every year. But it is definitely much less than the gold in the sky. In the tavern, Atlas held a pint of beer in his hand, raised his throat, and let the refreshing beer flow down the river. Atlas was twenty years old this year, and he was a mature man both physically and mentally. Man. Atlas was the only one in the entire tavern, not because the living conditions on the island were too poor, but because he did not hide it at all. He was wearing a pure white suit and a cloak of justice, and there was a general's heart clearly visible on his brochure. Star. All of these indicate his marine rear admiral status. Yes, long after the war in New World ended, he was promoted to a rear admiral. This is the territory of the Whitebeard pirates. Even though Whitebeard is usually more tolerant of the island's residents, they don't dare to get too close to marine. Aboard Moby Dick. Marco Sheeran walked out of the cabin with a helpless look on his face. He looked at Whitebeard with drooping eyes and spread his hands. Dad, that guy came to our territory again. Why don't you let that guy Josie do it this time? Just deal with it. Gula Lala, Marco. Josie is no match for him. You are more resistant to beatings, so you should go for a while. As soon as Whitebeard heard this, he knew that it was Marine's brat who threatened to challenge him again, and he couldn't help but laugh. As the Emperor of the Sea, Whitebeard naturally cannot deal with Atlas in person. He can only send the captain of the division, however, Marco was no longer his opponent a year ago, which means that Marco's regenerative flames can force him to driving with that kid at 55, this terrifying speed of progress surprised him. Another guy like Garp. Boss. Check out, mad, why hasn't that pineapple head come yet? Atlas looked at the wine barrels piled on the table, but there was no hint of drunkenness on his face, and his eyes were extremely clear. He then stood up and shouted to the cowering boss, and then complained with some dissatisfaction. Hey, it's not a good habit to speak ill of people behind their back, you annoying marine. A voice sounded at the door of the tavern. Atlas turned around and saw a man wearing a purple coat, with the Whitebeard Pirates logo tattooed on his chest, and a pineapple head appearing at the door of the tavern, with an impatient look on his face. Yo, Marco. You're finally here. I thought your Whitebeard Pirates were dying, and you didn't even have the manpower to teach me, a marine, who had intruded into your territory. Atlas said with a mocking tone, half smiling. Marco looked up to the sky and yawned, Why do you always like to make trouble? I heard that you went to the Big Mom Pirates to provoke Katakori some time ago, but the Big Mom guy took action in person. I'll chase you to Marine's base. Speaking of this, Atlas immediately became a little embarrassed, that's because Big Mom, that old witch doesn't have martial ethics. She's an emperor of the sea, and she actually came to hunt me down personally. It's so pitiful that Atlas only occasionally went to Toto Land to play in the autumn breeze. He only went there once, two, three, four, five, six times, mainly to have a friendly discussion with Katakori. Anyway, if he no one can stop him even if he wants to run, and he can also secretly learn observation hockey's ability to predict the future. Isn't that how Luffy learned it? Who knew that Big Mom's wife was so violent that she actually led Zeus and Prometheus to chase him? Fortunately, his vitality is now as strong as Xiao Qiang's, which means he is a little more embarrassed, and Big Mom can't do anything to him. Well, who told you that you were going too far? Marco became furious when he saw Atlas still looking aggrieved. Since the last New World reshuffle, this guy has been running to the Whitebeard Pirates and Big Mom Pirates every day. Jumping around on the territory, he was almost blacklisted by the two big pirate groups. But the vitality and self-healing ability of the guy in front of him are almost as good as his, a fantasy beast species famous for self-healing. If he hadn't seen him moving freely in the sea several times, Marco would really doubt whether this guy was I ate some zone devil fruit secretly. Let's go. I believe you don't want to affect the residents of the island. Let's just find an uninhabited island and have a fight. Atlas didn't bother to explain, and skillfully signaled Marco to move out of the way and walked straight out of the door of the tavern. Stepping out of the tavern door, Atlas stretched a little, and then a red light flashed in his eyes, and a powerful sense of perception spread from him. See and hear, 
Turn on, this kind of seeing and hearing. Marco's face behind him changed slightly, after the marine's sightings and colors in front of him quickly covered Ron Island, they spread unabated to the boundless sea. Marco almost didn't see this terrifying sightings and colors, pass. Found it, a smile appeared on Atlas's lips, while stepping on Moonwalk, he walked in a direction with no objects within his field of vision. Does this kind of knowledge, really exist? Marco looked at the deserted island in front of him and secretly compared the distance to Ron Island. He suddenly couldn't calm down at all. At least Marco had never seen such a terrifying range of perception. Marco, don't be distracted. If you miss, today may be the last time you breathe fresh air. Atlas looked at Marco's somewhat absent minded look and couldn't help but remind him that he didn't want to fight an opponent who couldn't calm down. Stop talking nonsense, Marine. Marco forcibly calmed down after hearing this. He knew how cold blooded the guy in front of him was. Despite his usual smiling face, if he failed here today, he would either be shot dead on the spot or imprisoned and impelled down. His methods are no less brutal than a kainu's. Crane Claw. As soon as he finished speaking, Marco opened his wings made of blue flames, quickly entered the human animal form, and used the force of falling from high altitude to quickly kick Atlas. Left. Atlas was very calm and kept locking Marco's figure. Almost at the same moment, he moved his body slightly and actually avoided Marco's kick. Predict future. Marco was startled, and forcibly stopped his body from rushing forward due to inertia, then quickly spread his wings and flew high, looking down at Atlas, and did not stop until the distance between the two reached a safe level. Marco will never admit his mistake. As the captain of the Whitebeard Squadron, he has been fighting with the Big Mom Pirates all year round. Naturally, he has dealt with Katakori many times, so he is very familiar with this kind of observation hockey who can predict the future. He clearly found that before he even started to attack, Atlas had already begun to dodge. Ching Yanyan. After a moment of stalemate, Marco took action instantly, and the green flames in his hands continued to condense into a large number of phoenix tail feathers. Then the huge number of phoenix tail feathers formed a flaming fist in midair and attacked Atlas on the ground. Fire fist, lousy can do it too, explosive fist armed. Atlas's fist quickly wrapped around a cluster of flames. His terrifying explosive ability was suspended, and his armament flowed accordingly. He retreated with his right leg, turned around, twisted his hips, and punched. Boom! When two explosive forces met, the air was like ripples on the water. The strong impact hit Atlas's body like a wave, but Atlas's feet clung to the ground, and his body the shape has not moved at all. It's getting more and more scary. As soon as he finished speaking, Marco suddenly leaned down and rushed down, whirling his wings, and hit Atlas directly in the face with a leg whip. Atlas didn't panic, raised his right hand, covered with armor, blocking Marco's attack trajectory in advance, and the two armed armors collided. Clang! This guy! Hockey seems to have strengthened again. Marco felt like a piece of ordinary steel colliding with hundred refined steel, and the strong counter shock force made his legs and feet hurt. Seeing that the attack was unsuccessful, Marco waved his wings, distanced himself, rolled in the air, and quickly turned his left foot into a claw shape, using the strong inertia to accelerate towards Atlas's chest. Crane Claw. Iron Body Armed Cross Hunting. Boom. Marco's armor covered claws collided with Atlas's crossed arms, and there was a slight stalemate for a few seconds before the two of them slid backwards one after another. But Atlas only took a few steps back, while Marco slid back dozens of meters, making the decision clear. Not bad, it seems that your strength has improved recently, Marco. Atlas was a little surprised, and it was right to think about it. Marco is also in a period of rapid growth in strength now. After such a long period of harassment by him, it would be unreasonable if he did not make any progress. Moreover, the peak strength per capita in the pirate world should be in his fifties, Marco is still very young now. Well, I'm not a jobber either. Marco scratched his head and chuckled. In the past six months, Atlas has fought with Marco dozens of times, so he naturally knows his abilities well. Although the regenerative blue flame given to him by his phoenix fruit does not have the attached damage like ordinary flames, and its main function is to heal. But when used against an enemy, it will also burn the opponent's vitality. It's impossible to heal the opponent anyway, 
and Marco has the common characteristics of fantasy beasts, with rough skin, thick flesh, long health bar, and the terrifying self-healing ability of regenerating blue flames. Although he is a bit limited in terms of attack methods, he is really good. He's so durable, therefore, Marco's main fighting method is physical skills, which is a bit like Atlas before the Dragon Talisman. He is a rogue player. After several battles, although both of them looked a little embarrassed, their auras were still intact and they didn't even show any signs of fatigue. Marco. Try this trick of mine. As soon as he finished speaking, Atlas's pupils trembled, and a strong aura burst out of his body. The surrounding vegetation was overwhelmed and began to show signs of cracking. Conqueror's Hockey. In the original game, the only one known to be able to use Conqueror's Hockey to deal physical damage is the red haired Shanks. And now Atlas can achieve the same effect with the blessing of the Sheep Talisman. Yes, the Sheep Talisman is a spell that he has only recently lit up. As he expected, the main function of the Sheep Talisman is to strengthen the soul. For him, the most important thing is to use the Sheep Talisman. The conspicuous effect is that the range of sight and sound is wider, and Conqueror's Hockey has also been strengthened. After the battle with Katakori, Atlas was already on the verge of predicting the future, and the Sheep Talisman just helped him open the door. The main performance of the Sheep Talisman in the original work is that it can leave the body, just like in the memory of Atlas's previous life, being able to leave the body must be a powerful soul, which involves mysterious and mysterious spiritual power. In the pirate's power system, Conqueror's is the embodiment of will, and seeing, hearing, and color is an extension of the spirit, which is what is commonly called the sixth sense. However, neither spirit nor will can be separated from the basic soul. This is nonsense from me, just treat it as my second guess. Marco's brain was struck by lightning. If the previous conquerors of Atlas was a wooden hammer to him, this time it was an iron hammer. But Marco is also the captain of the Whitebeard Pirates after all, so he was just stunned for a moment and immediately woke up. However, just that moment of loss of concentration was the biggest flaw for Atlas. Explosive fist armed shatter, the fist, which was so fast that it almost turned into an afterimage, hit Marco's body hard. Burned black fist marks appeared quickly, and the terrifying impact directly sent Marco flying higher into the sky. The intense pain made Marco's spirit tense instantly, and the vigorous regenerative blue flames covered his body. The previous scorching wounds healed instantly, and at the same time, his whole body transformed into a beast transforming into a phantom beast species, a phoenix. Phew! A piercing cry came from the beak of Markamon's form, and the regenerated blue flames on his body burned even more intensely. Phoenix Seal. After recovering from his injuries, Marco transformed into a human animal form again, and a shockwave emitting strong energy hit Atlas. The whole process went smoothly, without giving Atlas a chance to react. Armed and deployed, Atlas did not give in and the blood-red armed color collided with Marco's phoenix seal in the form of a shockwave. Boom! I don't know if this is the unique skill of Marco's phoenix fruit. After most of this shockwave was dispersed by Atlas's armed color, the remaining shockwave still hit Atlas. Return of life, arms, and martial god body. Atlas's body expanded rapidly, and the five-meter-tall warrior god's body rushed forward. With his powerful physique, he forced his face into the phoenix seal, the powerful kinetic energy allowed him to still maintain high speed and hit Marco. Bang bang bang. Fist to fist. Palm to palm. The two of them were fighting each other without any defense. Atlas's high quality armor covering his whole body gave him the capital to resist directly, while Marco's body was constantly burning with regenerative blue flames to restore the damage on his body. Although it has the super endurance of the phantom beast species, it still pales in comparison to the bug-like horse charm of Atlas. Marco, if you only have this little ability, you will stay here today. After the two separated, Atlas slowly pulled out the third generation Kitetsu from his waist. Atlas in the form of a warrior god is nearly 5 meters tall, and his palms are extremely thick. The seemingly petite third generation ghost is like a child's toy in his hands, creating a strong visual impact that makes people feel uncomfortable. Some want to laugh. However, Marco, who was confronting him, couldn't laugh at all. In his perception, Atlas's fierceness almost overflowed, causing his face to feel a little painful. The secret of Ichito Ryu. One snap of the finger contains 20 moments. 
One moment contains 20 thoughts. One thought contains 90 moments. One moment contains 9 million births and deaths. This trick, a strong sense of threat ran through every hair of Marco's body, and he quickly fluttered his wings and retreated out of biological instinct. A thousand cuts in an instant. The third generation Kitetsu in Atlas's hand seemed to transcend the concepts of time and space, slashing through Marco's body with ultimate speed. Clang. Put the knife away and sheath it. Marco was a little at a loss, he didn't have any injuries on his body, but his intuition told him that it was not that simple. Didn't you hear? The cry of flesh and blood, the words just fell. Countless knife marks appeared on Marco's originally intact body, and a large amount of blood spurted out. His whole body was like a ruthless blood spewing machine. Boom! Marco's body was shaken, and vigorous regenerative blue flames emerged from his body, but more and more knife marks appeared. Sizzle! More and more green inflammation emerges from the wound, and the flesh and blood continue to collapse and then repair instantly. Marco patted his chest with lingering fear, what a terrifying swordsmanship, I almost thought I was going to die here with that move just now. There were no stab wounds on his whole body, and not even a scar was left. There was just a little cold sweat on his forehead. He was really a little scared. Although his regenerative green inflammation could quickly heal the reborn flesh and blood, once attacked, if he exceeds his recovery limit, he will die. Stop lying. You are the legendary phoenix. A species of phantom beast even rarer than Logia. Atlas curled his lips, somewhat disdainful of Marco's acting skills. Hey, hey, hey. Why don't we stop here? There's nothing you can do to me if we keep fighting like this. That's not necessarily true, you say so, third generation Kitetsu. Atlas said, gently patting the third generation Kitetsu on his waist. The move just now was developed by him combined with the rabbit charm. His swordsmanship is pure and ultimate speed, which makes people feel that time and space are chaotic, and there is no way to avoid it. You can still use that trick? Marco was a little shocked, and at the same time his hair stood on end, and a strong sense of crisis enveloped his whole body, are you kidding me? Razor explosion. While Marco was dazed, Atlas stepped forward and punched Marco hard in the face. Puff. Marco's face was swollen after being punched by Atlas. A few teeth fell out, and a mouthful of old blood spurted out. However, a large amount of green inflammation quickly clung to him, and all injuries recovered almost instantly. Um. Suddenly, Atlas, who was about to take the next step, was stunned. A humanoid creature with strong vitality broke into his sight. It seemed to be the support of the Whitebeard Pirates. Let me let you go today. You won't have such good luck next time, Marco. Atlas turned around and left without hesitation. Marco didn't stop him when he saw this. Judging from Atlas's face, he guessed that his father had probably sent someone to help him, but even if another person came, he wouldn't be able to keep this guy. This guy could be the emperor from the sea. Oh man who escapes safely in his hands. Then, under Marco's curious and shocked gaze, Atlas ran away. That's right, running. With his current physique and the speed of the rabbit charm, there is absolutely no problem in running freely on the sea. It took a long time until Atlas' figure disappeared on the sea level, and a tall, dark-skinned man appeared in Marco's field of vision driving a boat. The man has two curved black beards, a dark blue top hat, a slit blue shirt, revealing a large amount of chest hair, a sword scabbard on each side of his waist, and a black cloak on his back. Captain of the 5th Division of the Whitebeard Pirates, Foil Bista. Hey. Marco, why are you in such a mess? Ha 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 ha. Bista saw the Madara Madara bloodline on Marco from a distance, but in his perception, Marco's life the atmosphere is still very strong, so feel free to laugh loudly. The atmosphere of the Whitebeard Pirates has always been like this. Forget it, that Marine is getting stronger and stronger. By the way, why are you here? Marco took a look at his clothes. Although all the wounds had disappeared, the large amount of bloodline could not be cleaned, but some of it was evaporated by the burning of the green flames. Well, daddy was a little worried after seeing you been gone for so long, so he asked me to come out and take a look at the situation. Bista couldn't help but echo what daddy told him before leaving. That arrogant marine is even more talented than Garp when he was young. Bista, go and see, I'm afraid something will happen to that stupid boy Marco. 
Marco scratched his head and said with some embarrassment, Fortunately, you came in time to make that guy from Atlas worry, otherwise I might have accidentally ended up here today. No, I understand how disgusting your ability is. How can this guy push you to this point? Bista was a little surprised. Marco's fruit ability is more powerful than ordinary phantom beasts. Every one of them in addition to Zone's general abilities of thick health, high defense, and strong recovery, the phantom beast also has a special ability. For example, Sengoku's big Buddha form is the big Buddha shockwave, Kaido's fish fruit and blue dragon form give him the ability to control thunder and flames, and Marco's phoenix has regenerative blue flames, which gives him the power to control as long as his attack power does not exceed his ability to instantly recover as long as he can withstand the upper limit. There's nothing I can do about it. That guy's physique and self-healing ability are even worse than a monster. I don't even know where his limits are, and... Marco paused, recalling Atlas's last terrifying sword move, and couldn't help but shudder, and continued, moreover, that guy's sword skills were simply terrifying. At that time, I felt that there was no way to avoid it. I simply couldn't avoid it. I can't see clearly when he draws his sword. As soon as he heard about swordsmanship, Bista licked his chapped lips, showed an interested look on his face, and murmured to himself, a great swordsman. See Circle Calendar 1507, Marine G5 Base, Staff Office. The entire office was empty, with no extra decorations and no gathering of bigwigs as expected. Behind the desk is Vice Admiral Crane, the Naval Headquarters Staff Officer, a legend with a gleam of wisdom in his eyes. Marine is looking up and down at Atlas sitting in the reception chair. Crane Vice Admiral is extremely satisfied with Atlas. She is an old Marine. She has basically dedicated her life to the just cause of Marine. From a slim girl to a white-haired woman, now she sees Marine succeeding the three monsters Vice. After Admiral, there was another outstanding young man who could become Marine's savior. She felt happy and relieved. Crane Vice Admiral, do you have any tasks for me when you come to me? Atlas had accepted a mission and was about to set off, but he was called here by Gion on the way to the port. He is still confused to this day. Don't worry, Atlas, what do you think of the current situation in New World? Crane Vice Admiral did not directly answer Atlas's question, but instead asked a lofty question about the current world situation, which made Atlas a bit at a loss. After pondering for a while, Atlas said slowly but surely, Now the New World pirates have the so-called Emperor of the Sea. The other pirates who come to the New World will either join these three pirate groups, or they will be destroyed at the hands of these three pirate groups or marine. Since the last time New World after the reshuffle of the world, we marine took over the original sphere of influence of the pirate alliance, and also attacked the Whitebeard pirates and the Big Mom pirates, and we became the biggest winner. However, the disadvantages of this situation are also very big. First of all, these pirates will be forced to join the three emperors, which will greatly increase their strength. There is nothing embarrassing for the pirates to join if they can't defeat them. Secondly, world government. Atlas brought up an earth-shattering topic, but Crane Vice Admiral's expression did not change at all, and he just motioned for Atlas to continue. Now the power of Marine has grown unprecedentedly. Since the first half of the Grand Line is where the headquarters is, it has always had the strongest control. Only New World has been occupied by pirates. Now Marine has officially settled in New World. The world government will definitely be afraid of us. Strictly speaking, Atlas's remarks have separated Marine from world government. If the five elders heard this, they would definitely be suspicious of Atlas. Marine is a violent organ of world government that controls the world. It is absolutely impossible for Marine to break away from the world government. So, now the five elders have been looking for Shichibukai candidates. From the establishment of the Shichibukai system to now, the only Shichibukai has been impelled down by you, so they are now looking for a new balance. Crane Vice Admiral added slowly. Any Marine with a righteous mind would not like to let the world government run wild on his head, especially the Celestial Dragons, a group of idiots. Garp has cursed the Celestial Dragons in public more than once, and they are a bunch of rubbish. However, Marine's most basic source of military expenditure is controlled by world government. Without world government, Marine will not exist for long at all. Well, the conflict with the world government will be left to Sengoku and the others to deal with. I asked you to come here mainly because of your transfer order from the headquarters. 
Crane Vice Admiral promptly stopped the topic, and the two of them kept silent in a tacit understanding. You also know that the current situation in New World has generally stabilized. The three pirate groups have suffered varying degrees of damage. There will definitely not be any large-scale war in a short period of time, so the headquarters plans to transfer some of its troops back to naval headquarters. And, Crane Vice Admiral looked at Atlas, who was sitting upright, with a smile on his face, your achievements are almost complete, and you can just go back to confer Vice Admiral honors with Cake, Guillaume and the others. Vice Admiral? Atlas probably had a hunch in his heart. After all, he had already achieved enough credit. In other words, his age and qualifications were a little different, so he was not directly promoted from Commodore to Vice Admiral a year ago. In addition, in the past year, he has basically, he was fighting pirates, and the achievements he accumulated were enough to erase the shortcomings in his qualifications. The warship has been prepared for you. Go back and prepare and then return directly to the headquarters. Hey, 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 isn't it so unlucky to encounter such horrible weather? On the warship, Kaji, who was currently courting Gion, was dumbfounded by the huge storm in front of him. Although he had long been psychologically immune to the strange weather in New World, he finally managed to be alone with the goddess in his heart, but was interrupted by the damn weather. Helmsman, prepare. The navigator changes course to avoid the storm. If he is caught in it, the entire warship will almost be doomed. Seeing this, Guillaume quickly issued an order so that he could escape from Cake's annoying harassment. Report to Guillaume Rear Admiral. The storm is too close to us and we have no time to escape. We can only minimize the damage to the warship and ensure that we reach Marineford safely. As soon as he finished speaking, a navigator hurriedly ran out of the cabin and loudly reported the current situation. Leave it to me. The warship must not be damaged, otherwise Sengoku Admiral will start to be verbose again. Atlas, who was leaning against the side of the ship with his eyes closed and concentrating, saw this and had no choice but to speak. You go ahead and control the direction of the warship. Just try your best to turn the rudder. Yes. Atlas Rear Admiral. The navigator originally saluted and was ordered to run towards the cabin. Seeing the navigator's back disappear from sight, Atlas turned his back to everyone and jumped off the warship. Hey, Brother Canos, what are you going to do? Gion was a little puzzled. She couldn't think of any connection between the method Atlas said and him jumping off the warship. Just watch, Gion Rear Admiral, Atlas didn't explain much. The muscles on his body expanded rapidly, and he instantly transformed into an 8 meter tall giant. This was the height limit he could reach in his life returning state. This was combined with the power of the ox talisman. This is a state of pure power output. Impact explosion. Atlas put his hands on the warship, and flames exploded under his feet. The powerful explosive power and terrifying power were released on the warship. So, with everyone stunned, this marine style warship was pushed by Atlas with his bare hands and sailed quickly on the sea. What? Is this a joke? Is this the power of the Atlas Rear Admiral? the power to push a warship with bare hands. Hey, 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 this is on the sea with no stress points. It's more terrifying than pushing a warship, isn't it? Although our warships are only medium-sized warships, this kind of expressiveness is too exaggerated. Soon, the warship was driven away from the center of the storm by Atlas. A group of marines successfully escaped the fate of the ship being destroyed and people were killed, but they were still shocked by Atlas's behavior just now. Okay, don't stand here and watch, go do what you have to do. Jia Ji spoke and dismissed the people watching the discussion. Looking at Atlas who looked relaxed in front of him, he squeezed out a smile on his ugly face, stretched out his fist and hit Atlas on the chest, and said with a smile, that's awesome. Brother Kanos. I can't keep up with your current strength. You are truly the monster among monsters that teacher Zephyr calls you. Brother Jia Ji, you don't have to be modest. I just have a little more fancy tricks. Atlas's move was not comparable to Whitebeard's single handed stoppage of the Moby Dick in the Summit War more than 10 years later. The Moby Dick was much larger than this standard warship, and that it was even more shocking to stand still and block the rapidly advancing Moby Dick. It is worth mentioning that Charlotte Irving, who had the heat fruit that Atlas killed before, did not know if she had watched the live broadcast of Summit War. She once tried to stop the ship with one hand but she failed to show off and was directly killed. Crush over. 
Okay. You two guys, stop being modest to each other here, pay more attention to the safety of the warship, and hope to reach Marineford soon. It's been such a long absence, and I'm finally back in Marineford. Looking at the tall and majestic building in front of him, the white waves lapped tirelessly at the crescent-shaped harbor, and recalling his experience in the New World, Atlas suddenly felt that things were different, and now he believed compared to when he first went to New World, both physically and hockey had undoubtedly grown tremendously. Soon, when the warship docked firmly at the port, the marine on duty came up to meet him. Atlas saw that he was an old acquaintance. Guion Rear Admiral, Cake Rear Admiral, Atlas Rear Admiral, did the headquarters recall you from the New World? Hates was actually a little embarrassed at first. He was the one who personally took Atlas to visit the recruitment camp. But after so many years, he is still a colonel in the headquarters, and Atlas is already a rear admiral in the headquarters. Maybe when did you get promoted to vice admiral? Although there is only one rank difference between rear admiral and colonel, let alone the rank of officer, there is a huge difference between a general level officer and a school level officer. The general level basically means that you can be regarded as a senior officer of marine, even if he is just a rear admiral, and the merits required to be promoted to general rank at the school level are unimaginable. Colonel Hayes, long time no see, how are you lately? Atlas naturally remembered Heights, so he said hello politely. It's okay, okay, you guys are going back to Marineford to receive awards this time, right? That should be the case. The situation in New World is quite stable now, so they called us back first. I'm so envious. Then Atlas, you will soon become the youngest vice admiral in marine history. Hayes did not hide his envy at all, but he did not have any jealousy. He had already passed it. That kind of pretentious grade, realizing that there are differences between people. Stop talking, let's go report to Sengoku Admiral first. I'll meet you for a drink when I have time. Atlas stopped greetings, raised his hand to Hayes and followed Gion and Cake to Sengoku's office. Dong dong dong. Dong dong dong, please come in. The three of them filed in after hearing the sound, and Atlas subconsciously looked around. It still has the original layout. In fact, Atlas has only been to Sengoku's office a few times. What impressed him most was the justice that rules the world, hanging high on the ceiling and the goat that kept chewing documents. I'm finally back. The situation in New World is pretty stable, right? Sengoku still has the same image of frog eyes and whip mustache, and he looks a bit glorious. After all, this New World War was carefully planned by him, which also increased his prestige among Marine. I believe five elders he won't be stuck in his position as marshal for too long. Reporting to Sengoku Admiral, Vice Admiral Garp is in charge of New World. There won't be any big problems. Our Marine has completely digested the occupied territory and the construction of major marine bases has been basically completed. The one who spoke was Gion. Among the three of them, Gion was the older one, right? You said it's a bonus, forget it, after all, Gion is more eye-catching. Very good, you will stay at naval headquarters during this period. A medal ceremony will be held for you in a few days. Xiaohei will be back soon. By then, Marine will transfer personnel to station in New World. As for your transfer order, it will come down in a few days. Sengoku briefly explained Marine's recent actions and the position changes of the three of them. Although they had been mentally prepared for a long time, the three of them were still a little excited when they heard Sengoku's personal confirmation. Currently, there is only one admiral in Marine, Sengoku, and Kong Kong has long since stopped caring about Marine's specific affairs. So the three of them can be said to be inferior to one. Of course, although the three of Akainu and the others are both Vice Admirals, their codenames are Vice Admiral, Ghost Spider and Flying Squirrel should not be codenames, and they do not have their names. More precisely, they are Admiral Candidates, although Admiral Candidates are not included in Marine's military rank system, but their status is still higher than that of ordinary Vice Admirals. Atlas will stay here for a moment, you two can go back first. Sengoku casually put the document he had just read into the goat's mouth, and then said to Cake and Gion. After hearing this, the two turned around and left without any hesitation. Click. Watching the two disappear behind the closed office door, they turned to stare directly at Atlas in front of the desk. Sangoku Admiral, if you have any questions, just tell me. Atlas couldn't help but ask, 
he really couldn't stand Sengoku's weird eyes, which made him look like a scumbag who always gave up. Cough. Cough. The main reason for keeping you here is to discuss with you where you will be stationed in the future. Gion should be on Shaohei's ship, and he will be stationed at the headquarters, as for you. See Circle Calendar 1507, Top of Red Line, Holy Land Marijor. This is the seat of the Five Elders, the world's most powerful people, and the world government. Here lives the most noble group of people in the world. They own the world and also have the privilege of enslaving the world. And these so-called descendants of the Twenty Kings, the so-called the world's nobility are just a bunch of rubbish and idiots. Marijoy is a holy place that is pursued by everyone. Everywhere you look, there are extremely luxurious and splendid palaces. The waiters coming and going are all handsome men and beautiful women, as if it is like a dream on earth. But under the gorgeous palace with its bright appearance, there are piles of bones and countless filth and filth, and there are too many crimes to describe. Night falls and the lanterns are turned on. The row upon row of palaces became increasingly mysterious and beautiful. Groups of slaves were constantly passing through the dark alleys, followed by guards waving whips as if to drive them away. The slaves were roughly pushed around like cattle and sheep. With the push, the slave who fell behind a little was slapped in front of him, and he had to push himself to get up even if he was bruised. The blood all over his body flowed down with the scars, and his numb and dull eyes seemed to have lost the sense of pain. As for fate, hey, the nobles of the world would not waste medicine just because of a slave. In this holy land that sits high in the clouds, slaves are always the cheapest items. Yes, they are items. In the eyes of celestial dragons, they are not the same species as the people in this world, they are gods. He is a descendant of the creator god who can enslave all things. Slaves were driven into dark dungeons one by one, huddled together, and their dinner was just a little scraps. Compared with the high intensity labor, they could only barely eat enough to maintain the most basic life activities, but they were not picky. Qualifications. As for praying for the coming of the Savior, maybe I still had this kind of fantasy a few years before I joined. At the same time, in a dark dungeon, there were no crowded slaves. There were only three girls sitting together. In the middle was a steamed bun that looked a bit stiff. The flies that came over from time to time showed that it was not delicious. Food. However, the stomachs of these three girls all growled in unison, and their constant swallowing showed their desire for this not so good looking steamed bun. Sister, you better eat. We, we're not very hungry yet. This is a group of three sisters. It seems that the younger sister forcibly stopped swallowing and looked at the elder sister among the three. Following the sister's line of sight, a girl with long black hair came into view. Even the gray stains on her face could not stop her delicacy and delicacy. Her whole body exuded invisible and irresistible temptation. After hearing her sister's rejection, she frowned unhappily, her red lips parted slightly, and a sweet sound like the call of an oriole came out. Marigold, what nonsense are you talking about? I, I've been full for a long time. Gulu, as soon as he finished speaking, three dull sounds of gastrointestinal peristalsis echoed. The three of them looked at each other awkwardly, and then broke into tears. How about the three of us share it together? Boom boom boom. The weather today is extremely gloomy, with dark clouds covering the sky, and darkness covering the sea. The occasional thunderstorms bring a glimmer of light, seeming to break the silent darkness. Suddenly, on the towering red line, a red, webbed hand grasped the edge of the continent. Boom! There was another thunderous sound, and a moment of white light shone on the owner of the fish flippers. This was a snapper fishman. Marineford, Admiral Office. The headquarters has decided to let you garrison Sabaudi Archipelago. Generally speaking, Sabaudi is garrisoned by a marine rear admiral. Atlas was a little confused when he heard this, and looked directly at Sengoku, as if trying to get the answer from his facial expression. Sengoku didn't show off, and explained his intention straightforwardly, the Sabaudi archipelago can be said to be the only way for pirates to enter the new world. All you have to do is to stop most of the pirates at the gate of the new world and let the whitebeard pirates there is no new blood flowing into the group, the big mom pirates and the beasts pirates. Now the three major pirate groups in the New World have been suppressed by our marine, but if a steady stream of pirates comes in, most of the arrangements we made before will be basically ruined, 
especially those so-called supernovas among the pirates. After hearing this, Atlas couldn't help but admire Sengoku's resourcefulness, he was worthy of being called the resourceful general among marines. This move can be called a desperate strategy. Like the three overlord pirate groups in New World, not to mention that they often have to fight with marine, and they are also constantly at odds with each other. Without the supplement of fresh blood, such a big pirate group it is estimated that only one bear commander will be left in the regiment at the end. Like Whitebeard and Kaido, they are very happy to accept new pirate groups to join them, even Big Mom, who seems to be the most cruel, is the same, but each has his own way. For example, Whitebeard likes to win the opponent's heart, whether or not he joins in, mainly relying on his strong personal charm. Big Mom is just two words. Marriage, as long as she likes her, she can marry her incompetent daughter to the other party. What a cold-blooded and ruthless tyrant believes in most is the bond of blood. It is no wonder that when his daughters get married, their hearts will be completely focused on their husbands, even if they betray the mother they are most afraid of. Kaido is relatively simple, just swing the stick and if you still don't accept it, dig in. If you are still not convinced, keep digging until you are convinced. Most people will eventually choose to join the beast's pirates. That is to say, Moria cannot fall into the arms of Kaido because of his partnership. Um, Moria, Atlas suddenly thought, this guy should be escaping from Wanokuni soon. By the way, he dug Wanakuna's ancestral grave, and there should be many famous swords. The third generation Kitetsu in Atlas's hand has long been a bit difficult to use, and the black sword and Chusui are very suitable for him. Brubru, Brubru. Just when Sengoku pinched his throat and was about to start his long speech, the phone on his desk suddenly rang. Moxie Moshi, this is Sengoku. Sengoku picked up the phone on the table, his voice as calm as ever. I am Saint Nazarov. Five elders. A word suddenly flashed in Atlas's mind. He claimed to be, holy, and he could directly find Sengoku. He was undoubtedly the highest authority in the world government, the five elders. Excuse me. What's the matter? Sengoku unconsciously sat up straighter. Marie Joy was attacked, tick tock tick, in the gloomy and damp dungeon, there is a darkness so deep that it seems to be able to swallow everything. Stella. Stella. A young man who looked to be in his twenties was huddled in the corner of a dark dungeon, mumbling to himself. His eyes were dull, his face was pale, his eye sockets were sunken, and his body was in tatters. His skinny body was like a candle in the wind, falling down when blown. Only one head of grey-green hair is more conspicuous. It was dinner time now, and some rotten leaf cabbage and fly-infested steamed buns were placed haphazardly in the center of the dungeon. However, the boy ignored the hunger in his stomach and just chanted the name over and over again. Occasionally a few tears flowed from his red eyes. Hey! Don't you want to eat? The slave in the same cell grabbed the food on the ground and stuffed it into his mouth while looking at the young man in the corner and asked. Newcomer? A hoarse male voice came from the darkness, and a tall man walked out following the voice. Through the faint moonlight coming from the cracks in the wall, one could vaguely identify a man who was nearly forty years old. His eyes were calm, and he did not look like an ordinary slave, of sluggishness and despair. Ang, my name is Cory. I was captured not long ago. Cory scratched his head in embarrassment and reluctantly handed over the food in his hand. Are you hungry? I can give you these. Hey, I can't eat these garbage things, so I'll give them to you. The middle-aged man did not accept it, but sneered disdainfully. What's wrong with him? He's so thin, why doesn't he eat anything? Cory did not immediately deal with the food in his hand, instead, he pointed at the young man with grey-green hair in the corner and asked doubtfully. Don't worry about this guy. The middle aged man glanced at the grey green young man who was still mumbling to himself, with a mocking arc at the corner of his mouth. This guy's name is Tetsolo. It seems like five years ago, oh no, who came here six years ago? When he first came here, he clamored all day long that he wanted to find a woman named Stella. Hey, guess what happened in the end? The middle aged strong man asked Cory in a wicked way. I don't know, that woman must be dead otherwise he wouldn't be like this. Cory guessed with some uncertainty. Bingo! That's right, the woman named, Stella, was bitten to death by a wild beast in the Celestial Dragons arena five years ago. Since then, this guy has become like this crazy person. 
It seemed that a sad memory was brought up once. The originally dull eyes of Tetsolo, who was curled up in the corner, fluctuated slightly, revealing a touch of paranoia and madness in his eyes. Moreover, I am a slave in the arena, and I happen to see this scene. Lousy saw this guy from being energetic at the beginning to being numb and sluggish now, mad. As he said this, the middle-aged man cursed angrily, whether he was scolding Tezoro for his stupidity or the celestial dragon's cruelty. After hearing about Tezolo's experience, Cory felt pity and wanted to go over to comfort him. However, after looking at Tetsolo, who was exuding a smell of, no strangers, and his stomach that was constantly urging, he hesitated for a moment. After hesitating, he sat down cross-legged, picked up the food on the floor and continued fighting. Kid, hurry up and go to bed after eating. There will be heavy labor waiting for you tomorrow morning, unlike Lousy, he. What are you doing in the arena? Cory was a little curious when he heard this. The middle-aged man had mentioned that he was a slave in the arena before. Haha. <laughs> what can we do in the arena? Of course we can kill each other for the fun of those celestial dragons. After finishing speaking, the middle-aged man found a haystack and lay down. The arena sounded very exciting, and it felt like a dream place for all men, but Marijoas's arena was only for those boring celestials. Dragons just adds a little bit of fun to the bloody slaughterhouse. The middle-aged man not only has to face different slaves as opponents every day, but sometimes one of the celestial dragons may be interested in a human-animal war. It can be said that he walks on the edge of death every day. He does not have the time or energy to be like Tezo. Luo felt so sorry for himself, even though his son and even his wife died at the hands of the celestial dragons. There is hope only when you are alive. After a while, a man's snoring came from the dungeon, and Cory quickly ended his fight with the food, looking at the dungeon fence with a somewhat hollow look in his eyes. Free? Cory was a little distracted, he was still young, and he didn't have an unforgettable hatred for the celestial dragons. His slave life was not very long, only a few days, and he didn't have much desire for the freedom that others said. Perhaps it would be nice to spend your life here like this. Cory thought with some self-deprecation that anyway, for him who had no friends, it would be the same wherever he went. Marijoy could still give him a bite to eat, and maybe he could also meet the legendary world nobles celestial dragons. Cory's hometown is in the West Blue, a sea area where gang culture is prevalent. He was caught on a slave ship and sold here. Like most ordinary people in the pirate world, he has never seen a real celestial. Dragons, I only have a vague understanding of them from other people's mouths. Some people hate them, some people yearn for them, and some people are dismissive of them. Suddenly, just when Cory was in a daze, a flash of fire forced his way into his sight that was originally swallowed up by darkness, and the fire spread faster and faster, as if it was about to break the night and become the horn before dawn. Cory suddenly woke up, jumped up from the ground, and shouted loudly. It's burning. Has Marijoy been invaded? Cory was a little unbelievable. Among the people of the world, Marijoy was the residence of the descendants of the god of creation. How could anyone invade this so called holy land? Um. The middle aged man who had just fallen asleep was awakened by Cory's call. He subconsciously looked at his surroundings, and his attention was quickly attracted by the fire in the distance. Can go out. A trace of resentment flashed in the middle aged man's eyes and he clenched his stretched palms tightly, with large veins protruding on his arms. His eyes were a little red, and his body was shaking uncontrollably. As if he had made some important decision, the middle-aged man let out a long sigh, as if a heavy burden had been lifted off his body, but his eyes looked towards the thick wall, as if through the obstruction, he looked at a place in Marijoy. The palace, that is, the residence of the celestial dragons. Tetsolo in the corner also made some movement, he moved his limbs a little stiffly, and there seemed to be a touch of life in his eyes, as if a person had faith, or obsession. Red Line, Holy Land Marijoy. Fires raging everywhere and shouts of vent have now become the main theme of this city that never sleeps. Among the swaying flames, a tall red fishman led a group of liberated slaves and roughly opened the cells. More and more slaves joined the mighty team. Cory and the middle-aged burly man were naturally among them, and even Tetsolo who just looked sad, was also among the crowd. Hey, uncle, why are you going? Cory, who
who looked nervous, stretched out his hand and grabbed the middle-aged man next to him, not because he was afraid, but this guy actually walked in the opposite direction of the team. What are you going for? Of course, to take revenge. The middle-aged man almost said this through gritted teeth, and his eyes no longer had the original calmness and composure. The madness revealed made Corey couldn't help but take a step back, and the palm that originally grabbed him couldn't help but consciously relaxed. Penny, Turner, I can finally avenge you, woo woo woo. The middle-aged man stumbled towards the residence of Celestial Dragons with a cry in his voice. Corey looked at his leaving back with a complicated expression, he couldn't empathize with him, but he knew, it must be painful. Tiger naturally noticed the movement on Corey's side, but he did not do anything to stop it. Everyone has their own choice, and he is not a reckless man. He rescued these people and gave them a choice. Opportunity is the limit of what he can do. You losers, hurry up and get my slaves back. This young celestial dragons, saint of the world of Rhodes, was a little angry at this time, and kept sucking the slugs that came out of his nose. He was originally excited to choose a few male slaves to serve him, but what he got was that his slaves were actually the man ran away. Although he killed several guards with guns, he was still a little upset. Rhodes World Saint, CP0 has already taken action to arrest the escaped slaves. The five elders have issued an order prohibiting you from stepping out of the palace gate. There are all lowly slaves outside. I'm afraid they may accidentally injure you. The trembling waiter on the side couldn't help but remind him that even if he was frightened by the shooting just now, if something happened to Rhodes World Saint, he would die more miserably, so he would stop Rhodes World Saint from stepping out no matter what. Palace Gate. I am a celestial dragons, even though slaves dare to touch me. At this time, the young world Saint Rhodes has obviously not been beaten yet and is very confident in his identity as a celestial dragons. Moreover, how could he change his sleeping plan that he had already decided on tonight? He is the supreme celestial dragons. This made the waiter on the side miserable. Then he had an idea and put a flattering smile on his face. Holy world Saint Rhodes, there are so many slaves outside, the air is a bit unclean, and they are not dressed up. Well, how do I qualify to meet you, a world noble? This, Rhodes world saint was a little hesitant, and suddenly retreated in his heart. He had always been proud of his identity as celestial dragons, so he naturally believed that those slaves were not qualified to see him. Well, I won't go out, then you must bring back my slaves. Yes, the noble saint of the world, Rhodes, Mero Mero Mello. Cory, who had accidentally escaped from the team, was suddenly startled. A guard with a gun next to him was hiding in the darkness and turned into a human shaped stone statue. It was Cory who was aiming his gun at him. Cory suddenly broke into a cold sweat after seeing the situation clearly. If he had been shot just now, even if he was lucky enough not to die on the spot, it would probably be impossible to escape from Marijoy. Following the voice just now, I turned around and saw a very beautiful girl with a slightly wider forehead, smooth and flat eyes, slender and delicate eye corners a little indifferent almond eyes, a high nose bridge, a small and cute nose, and beautiful lips. Very soft but not coquettish, her long black hair hangs straight down. It is simply the long black hair that all men dream of. Looking down, she was dressed in an ordinary slave dress, but even though she was still young, she still stood tall, and the little lotus showed her sharp horns and looked so young and lovely. Hey, rude man, what are you looking at? Hancock was a little angry, he saved the guy in front of him for the sake of being a slave, but the guy kept looking at him rudely. Hancock suddenly became a little angry and was about to activate the fruit power in his hand to petrify this guy forever. Ah, sister, sister, no, let's leave here quickly. If we are caught by the celestial dragons again later, we will never be able to leave. Sandersonia on the side saw the angry Hancock and immediately hugged her anxiously. They had already wasted too much time here, and the main task now was to escape from this dirty place. Yes. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to look at you, Corey was a little panicked. I really don't blame him for this. Even though Hancock is still young, she already has the charm of being the most beautiful woman in the world in the future. In addition, the sweet fruit has added charm to him. If Corey is it would be strange if Lee could block it. The three Hancocks ignored him and hurriedly ran towards the port of Marijoy. In this situation, only taking a boat could successfully escape from this place. 
The situation in Marijoy is very urgent now. Marine, hurry up and send more manpower. You must not let those slaves escape from Marijoy. This will be an unprecedented scandal for the world government. Otherwise, humph, you can do whatever you want. Saint Nazarov's sneer came over the phone. Snap. The call bug was hung up on Sengoku's gloomy face, which made Sengoku, who was originally in a good mood, suddenly feel a little gloomy. Sengoku Admiral, Marijoy was attacked, Atlas asked, who was listening to the entire conversation. He did have an impression. It seemed that in 1507, in the Sea Circle calendar, the Holy Land Marijoy was invaded by a fishman named Fisher Tiger, and in the future, the most beautiful pirate empress in the world. Boa Hancock was also rescued at this time. Um. Sengoku pondered for a while, and then quickly made arrangements, Atlas, you happen to be here. You will now lead a warship to Marijoy to assist the CP department in completing their mission. I will arrange for Perusolino and Gia G is following behind. It's really troublesome. Just help. If it's not completed, don't blame us Marine. Marine Ford Harbor. A warship is moored quietly on the sea. There are about 2,000 Marine soldiers on the warship ready to go. This is a large Marine standard warship. It has to be said that Sengoku's work efficiency is still very high. As soon as he was given an order here, ships and soldiers were prepared there. It's just. Atlas may have to live up to Sengoku's hard work this time. If he fails by then, it will be justified. After all, Atlas is just a small rear admiral now. As for vice, admiral, what? Isn't it that the awarding ceremony hasn't been held yet? Hey, little brother, would you mind taking me for a ride? It's true that Sengoku admiral wants me to get up and work overtime at such a late hour. Just as Atlas was thinking, an obscene voice came from behind him. Needless to say, the only person who could engrave the word obscene in his words and deeds was Kazaru, besides Kaji. Kazaru Vice Admiral, why are you so efficient this time? I thought you were going to follow behind. Atlas turned around and teased Kazaru. There is nothing I can do. My warship is still under repair, and Sengoku Admiral has not prepared a warship for me, so I can only use yours for a while. Kazaru frowned and said with some embarrassment, That's really embarrassing. A warship will greatly reduce my work efficiency. Yeah, I don't know if Marine pays overtime, but I don't accept unpaid overtime. Atlas and Kazaru looked at each other and responded to each other tacitly. Okay, I won't say any more nonsense, everyone is here, target, Holy Land Marijoy. The huge warship slowly left the port of Marineford and sailed towards Marijoy in an orderly manner. Dawn breaks, and light appears. When the warship arrived at Marijoy successfully, almost half of the sky in Marijoy was illuminated by fire, and there were runaway slaves and captured guards everywhere. However, not all slaves are bent on escaping. There are always a small number of people who no longer care about life and death. Taking advantage of the chaos and taking revenge may be their only purpose. However, there are only a few people who dare to challenge the authority of the world's nobles like the middle-aged strong men. Others may be out of anger but have nowhere to vent, and can only selectively retaliate against the port city below Marijoy. Marine, you're finally here. Why is there only one warship? Just as the warship docked at the port, a man wearing a black and white mask, his whole body hidden in darkness, approached Atlas and Kazaru who were talking. Huh? Are you a gutter rat teaching me how to do things? Atlas heard this guy's questioning tone and retorted somewhat unhappily. He didn't have a good impression of the people in the CP department to begin with, and Marine was not affiliated with them, so Atlas didn't need to give him any face. You, yo yo yo, okay, I'll leave this to you, Atlas. I'd better go to the Holy Land Marijoy to have a look, after all, it wouldn't be good to disturb the world's nobles. Seeing that the masked man seemed to want to attack, Kazaru quickly interrupted and brought out the celestial dragons as a shield. The masked man had no choice but to give up after hearing this. Although Marine and the CP department have never been easy to deal with, unlike Marine, the CP department serves the Celestial Dragons wholeheartedly. Everything is centered on the Celestial Dragons, this is what they have accepted since childhood. Of education, anything can give way to the needs of the Celestial Dragons. No problem, leave this to me. My conquerors are great for clearing the place. Conquerors, how terrible! As soon as he finished speaking, 
Kazaru's entire body turned into light elements and flew towards Marijoy, leaving Atlas with a depressed look on his face. If he hadn't known that Kazaru's usual tone of voice was like this, he almost thought that Kazaru was mocking him just now. Conquerors, CP0 on the side was a little stunned. He just heard that only Sengoku of Marine had revealed Conqueror's hockey. He didn't expect that the young Marine in front of him also had that kind of qualification. He knew that people like Marine and their CP department were basically not the same. May wake up Conquerors, especially their CP department. What a scary bunch of guys. The sight of Atlas enveloped the entire port city, and the movements of countless people were clearly visible. It was not clear whether the terrible he meant was the celestial dragons, or this group of raging slaves. Mr. Marine, please stop this riot quickly. CP Zero's tone this time was much better. I wonder if he had been with celestial dragons for too long. He always thought that he had that kind of unscrupulous power, and there was always a sense of superiority in his words. Really, why are you urging me? Atlas rubbed his brows impatiently, his pupils trembled slightly, and a powerful hockey spurted out. Buzz. Everyone in the city, whether they were escaped slaves or guards chasing him everywhere, felt a sense of oppression in their hearts. You despicable slaves, how dare you run away, ah! Uh. The three Boa and Hancock sisters watched the guard who was snarling at them slowly fall down, and their brains couldn't calm down for a while. Hockey. Hancock, who was still the most qualified, was the first to notice something strange. He looked at the location of the port with some uncertainty then picked up the three sisters and ran towards the refuge ship prepared by Tiger. Scared me. The grey-green-haired Tetsolo patted his withered chest with lingering fear. At the same time, he carefully picked up the weapon that had just fallen from the ground and slammed it at the guard lying on the ground. The same scene is happening in every corner of this city. Many people who were supposed to die in this turmoil may have their fate change. Hey, hey, hey. What are you doing? The CP0 next to Atlas naturally noticed the abnormality and immediately asked Atlas loudly. I'm really sorry. My conqueror's awakening time was too short. I was still a little out of control and made a mistake. Atlas said he was sorry, but his expression showed no apology at all. What a liar. CP0 was a little angry. This guy was obviously helping these slaves, but he couldn't do anything about this marine. His face under the mask was even a little distorted. HMPH, I will definitely report this matter to the five elders. You should think carefully about how to give Sengoku an explanation. After a long time, the red sun rose, and the morning light was slightly drunk. The riots and fires gradually subsided, and most of the slaves boarded the refuge ships that had been prepared. Atlas's warships followed the largest ship unhurriedly. Atlas Rear Admiral, please drive faster. If you let these slaves escape, you will suffer the consequences. Soldiers over there, can your cannons be more accurate? Since boarding the ship, CP0, who was wearing a black and white mask, has been nagging in Atlas's ears, and even started to overstep his authority and direct the operations of the warship for Atlas. This, Marine on the side was a little embarrassed, asking them to fire cannons to chase these unarmed slaves. This would undoubtedly be a devastating blow to the beliefs they had always followed. Shut up! You, Atlas really couldn't stand this guy's nonsense, so the powerful conquerors came out of his body and pressed directly on CP Zero's body. Hey hey hey! What do you want to do? CP Zero, who was wearing a black and white mask, had cold sweat on his forehead, and his back was wet with sweat almost instantly. What don't you want to do? If you don't shut your mouth, I believe you will never have the chance to speak again. Threaten. A naked threat. CP0 in the black and white mask knew very well that Atlas would not take action against him unless this guy no longer wanted to hang out in Marine. But, he didn't dare to bet, because if he lost the bet, he would die. Ah, seeing CP0 in the black and white mask silent, Atlas sneered with some disdain. Guys like this who have been trained and brainwashed by celestial dragons since childhood are nothing more than walking zombies without self. Don't worry about this guy, just attack according to your own ideas. Yes, sir. This guy. This guy. What a. CP0, who was wearing a black and white mask, kept roaring in his heart, but his body was very honest and he did not dare to move for fear of causing Atlas to misunderstand. If he accidentally shot him to death on the spot, it would be really unfair. 
Boom boom boom. A large number of cannonballs were fired at the refuge ship, but most of the cannonballs missed. Instead, the huge waves caused by the cannonballs made the refuge ship farther and farther away from the pursuing fleet. On the largest refuge ship, Benefactor, the marine chasing us seems a little strange. A newly freed slave looked at the red murloc beside him with some confusion and asked, This is a snapper fishman, wearing a turban, with thick curly hair, a wide mouth, a beard, a little stubble on his upper lip, and a tall and powerful figure. Don't call me benefactor, my name is Tiger, Fisher Tiger. These marines don't seem to want to pursue us, Tiger replied with a somewhat uncertain tone. For Tiger, he didn't have much interaction with marine but he was suspicious and even wary of world government, and even humans. He used to be very happy with Princess Odehime and dreamed of living under the sun with humans, but that miserable slave time made him completely disappointed. Maybe he knew that no matter what race he was, there would always be good people. Or a bad person, but deep down in his heart, he still hates humans deeply. Never mind them, let's sail at full speed now and get rid of the marine behind us first. Tiger gave the order, and everyone on the ship did not dare to make a mistake, after all, it was Tiger who saved them from that hell just now, and they were still very convinced of Tiger. Moreover, Tiger can completely abandon his slaves and jump into the sea to escape. He is the darling of the sea, the murloc. In an inconspicuous corner of the refuge ship, the three Hancock sisters huddled together were attracted by Marine's attack. With the strong physical fitness brought by the zone fruit ability, they easily saw the man standing on the bow of the ship, Atlas. Sister, just now. Did this marine save us? Sandersonia asked with some uncertainty, although he was not as talented as Hancock, her intuition told her that the conquerors in the port city just now definitely belonged to this marine. Hmm. That should be it. Hancock nodded heavily, his eyes flickering, a little absent-minded, not knowing what he was thinking. On the warship. Sir. Those slaves are about to get rid of us, and the distance between the warship and them is getting farther and farther. It's okay, let me give them a ride. Atlas had an inexplicable look on his face, and without stopping, the dragon talisman was activated. Exploding flames. Thick pillars of explosive flames shot out from the warship and landed accurately on the edge of the refuge ship ahead. The terrifying explosive power suddenly splashed into huge waves, and the huge propulsion was released on the hull. Everyone, hold on tight. Try to grab the fixed objects on the ship and don't be thrown off. Tiger shouted with all his strength, but it was quickly covered up by the sound of huge waves. Sorry, my hand slipped a little accidentally. Atlas tilted his head and looked at CP0, who was wearing a black and white mask, and said his sincere apology for the first time so far. Soon, under the intense high temperature, thick water mist rose in the sea area. As Atlas expected, the warship lost sight of Tiger and others. Report sir. The group of slaves have been lost ahead. That's such a pity, but there's nothing we can do about it. Their luck is too good. I believe Sengoku Admiral won't blame me. Atlas said with a fake regret, his look of sincerity and fear was vivid. Atlas Rear Admiral, you must be responsible for all your actions today. CP0 on the side finally couldn't bear it anymore after looking at Atlas's poor acting skills. Today's mission was a complete failure. Even if he could escape the punishment of death by chance, he would probably be doomed in this life, so he just gave up, broken. Huh, interesting. Suddenly, a powerful life form suddenly broke into Tiger's sight, and the other party was obviously aware of his sight. Hey, you, don't talk nonsense, my knowledge, knowledge and color are not lost on them. As soon as he finished speaking, Atlas jumped off the warship and began to run wildly on the sea, with a large amount of snow white waves splashing out behind him. Running on the sea? This guy is actually just a rear admiral? CP0, who wore a black and white mask, was a little shocked. He was already shocked that Atlas had conquerors hockey, but he didn't expect this guy to be able to run freely on the sea. It's really scary. I didn't expect someone like you to be involved in this incident. Atlas stepped on the moonwalk from the sea looking down at Tiger and his party, and a man at the bow of the ship. The man has long curly blonde hair, sorry, there was a typo earlier, I forgot that Rayleigh was not very old at this time, so it should be blonde, a thick beard on his chin, wearing round glasses, and a slit on his right eye. 
A scar ran through the top and bottom, and his sharp eyes stared at Atlas in midair. Silver Rayleigh, Atlas looked at the man in front of him and slowly said a name, you are called the right arm of Roger the Pirate King, shouldn't you stay in a certain corner of the world to retire? Sorry, Brother Marine, I can't let you pass. Rayleigh did not answer Atlas's question, but slowly drew out the long sword in his hand and pointed it at Atlas. Tiger, you better go first, let me stop this marine guy. Rayleigh looked relaxed and turned to Tiger behind him. Okay, then be careful. Tiger nodded slightly, he was naturally very clear about Pluton Rayleigh's strength and had no worries about his safety. The man in front of him was definitely one of the strongest people in the world at the moment. Atlas looked at the ships that were getting further away, but did not stop them. Anyway, he came here not really to stop Tiger and the others. Mainly because he was very interested in fighting Rayleigh, and he had an explanation for the top management of world government. After all, he had a fight with Rayleigh, the right arm of the Pirate King, in order to hunt down these escaped slaves. He couldn't be blamed for not being able to stop him. After all, he you are still too young now. Atlas had already thought of a way to deal with the five elders. It was simply a plan to kill two birds with one stone. Brother Marine, you don't really want to capture them, do you? If we have different positions, we don't need so much nonsense, right? Mr. Rayleigh. Seeing that Atlas had no intention of chatting with him, an old man, Rayleigh's expression did not change at all, and with the strength of his feet, a deep pit appeared on the sea. Uh huh. With a strong sound of breaking through the air, Rayleigh's figure quickly appeared in front of Atlas, and a strong sense of oppression hit his face. Rayleigh is 63 years old this year, which is the same age as Garp. If it were placed on ordinary people, he would be already very old at this time, but for these top powerhouses, this age is just the right age for their strength. During the peak period, there may be a slight decline in physical fitness, but it is basically negligible. It's really a long lost feeling of oppression. At this time, Atlas not only had no fear, but a touch of excitement appeared on his face. Being able to fight against the world's strongest men at their peak made the warlike factor in his body boil. Boom! The collision between the fist and the blade caused the color of the weapon to flow and splash out clusters of sparks. What a fierce hockey, Marine Chan! Rayleigh was a little surprised. She didn't expect that the young man in front of him, hockey, was not inferior to this old guy in terms of quality. You're not bad either, Mr. Rayleigh, Atlas sneered, and his body shape changed rapidly. He compressed to a height of about two meters, covered with black and red hockey. Two lines spread from the corners of his eyes to his neck, and every muscle was as clear as a knife carving. It can be seen that the hot breath is constantly spurting out. Life return arm paper arts martial body, ouch. At this time, Rayleigh clearly sensed that the aura of the marine in front of him had changed drastically and the threat to him was also increasing, with a look of surprise in his eyes. Let me try the courage known as the, Pirate King's right arm. As soon as the words fell, the two figures were entangled again. The strong hockey collision caused the surrounding sea surface to continuously dent, and the terrifying impact occasionally splashed huge waves several feet high. Clang! The long sword covered in armament colors collided with Atlas' fist again. It's so scary! There are no wounds at all. Rayleigh looked at Atlas, who had no flaws at all. It stands to reason that no matter how powerful the weapon is, if it is covered all over the body, even if the defense area is expanded, the defense power of a single area will definitely decrease. But the marine in front of him seems to directly violate this law, which can only mean one thing, either his weapon color is stronger than what he shows, or this guy's hockey power is terrifying. Explosive punch impact. Explosive flames quickly grew on Atlas's fist. He pulled his fist back and rushed straight into Rayleigh's face with the fist carrying great power. Bang! Bang! Rayleigh lifts the sword crossbar, and the weapon color covers the sword body. The two collision sounds almost happened one after the other at the same time. The terrifying force made Rayleigh's mouth feel numb, and her body couldn't help but fall back. Displaying the armed colors? Before his fist hit the sword, a blood red weapon colored impact came towards him. Even Rayleigh took a blocking stance and was caught off guard. What a monster like young man! It seems that I have to show some real skills. Rayleigh hurriedly stood up and smiled a little. From the brief confrontation just now, 
he already had a rough understanding of the strength of the young marine in front of him. It is no exaggeration to say that Atlas is definitely the most outstanding young man he has ever seen, bar none. I originally thought that Shanks was quite outstanding among young people, but compared to the marine in front of me, he seemed to be even inferior. Thinking of this, a serious look appeared on Rayleigh's face, and he held the hilt of the sword with both hands. Compared with holding the sword with one hand, holding the sword with two hands can exert greater power, and it can have a greater advantage in frontal attack and defense. Which also shows that Rayleigh really takes Atlas seriously. Razor Explosion Atlas struck first, constantly changing his body shape in the air. The powerful speed and agility brought to him by the paper arts body allowed him to approach Rayleigh almost instantly. Clang! Atlas took advantage of the momentum of charging forward, kicked his legs sideways, and directly collided with Rayleigh's sword. The metal whine caused by the collision of weapons sounded. As expected of Pluton, Atlas looked at the disappearing bloodline on his calf. Rayleigh was really scary when he got serious. He actually broke through his armed defense. Although it didn't cause too many wounds to him, it also made Atlas's heart gradually fade. Be wary. Flying finger pistol explosion. Continuous and intensive blasting rays emitted from Atlas's hand, shooting towards Rayleigh with the power of a meteor shower from the sky. Poof. Rayleigh relied on his powerful sense of sight to avoid the incoming blasting flames, but his scorched hair and beard and torn clothes showed his embarrassment at this time. CP0, who was still on the warship, was vaguely aware of the fighting in the distance, but he did not dare to go alone to watch the battle. He was afraid that Atlas would seize the opportunity to kill him, and frame him for the pirates. The world government would not pursue him. Marine, move the ship forward a little to see how the battle is going. CP0, wearing a black and white mask, ordered Marine next to him. But what made him a little embarrassed was that these Marines were completely indifferent to his words and did not give him this CP0 face at all. It's so frustrating, he muttered with some dissatisfaction. Ever since he got on the ship, he had been annoyed. Mud. The more he thought about it, the angrier he became. CP0 in the black and white mask simply sat down on the deck, not caring about the situation at Atlas. Atlas here naturally didn't know the grievances in CP0's heart. He just stared at Rayleigh opposite him with solemn eyes, his muscles tense and his fists ready to go. Iron fist shatter. The muscles of Atlas' arms were pumping, and the shadows of his fists immediately overwhelmed Rayleigh. However, the strange thing was that almost all the shadows of his fists did not fall directly on Rayleigh's body, but instead hit the air beside Rayleigh strangely. Um, seeing this situation, Rayleigh abruptly stopped evading. Predict future. Although it is indeed powerful to predict the future through sight, hearing and color, the future is constantly changing. What Atlas predicts is only what may happen in the future, not what will definitely happen. Atlas did not expect that his knowledge of the future could suppress Rayleigh. As the right arm of the Pirate King, he had experienced far more battles than him, and his combat experience and ability to adapt to changes were also stronger than his. Batajutsu Rakery the third generation ghost was unsheathed at his waist, a flash of cold light flashed, and a blood red slash hit Rayleigh with an unavoidable force. This is, it's so fast. Rayleigh felt that he couldn't avoid it at all. In the blink of an eye, blood red slashes filled his field of vision. Suddenly, Rayleigh raised the sword in his hand, and the weapon color was wrapped around it. Black and red lightning danced happily on the blade. A menacing aura emitted from the sword and the surrounding space felt vaguely distorted. Conquerors. Tangled. Uh-huh. Atlas's slash was wiped out almost instantly, and a slash that was more than twice as big as before was slashed towards Atlas with unabated force. The flying slash almost split the sea in half, and the terrifying sharpness was unleashed on Atlas with Conqueror's unique intimidation. Puff. A large mouthful of blood spurted out, and the armor on his chest was forcibly broken open. A huge gap appeared from top to bottom. The tumbling flesh and blood continued to spray bright red blood. Atlas felt that his mind was weak for less than 0.001 seconds. Blank, but then the healing power of the horse charm instantly eliminated all the wounds on the body. Mud. Labor and capital only use one skill, why don't you just give me the ultimate move? Atlas spit out the remaining blood foam in his mouth and complained in a depressed tone. Oh, 
even the recovery power is beyond the monster level. Seeing that Atlas healed the wounds caused by him in an instant, Rayleigh was shocked and almost thought that this guy had eaten some devil fruit that was related to healing. You know, although there are people with the kind of physiques called monsters in this world, they can't achieve the instant recovery ability of Atlas. Even the current Kaido of New World can't do it. Tear, old guy, it seems you want to be serious? Atlas was a little angry, except for the embarrassing experience he had with Kaido, no one had ever made him so embarrassed. He tore off his torn clothes, revealing his muscular upper body, and held the third generation demon grip in his hand, in front of you. The secret of Ito Ryu, 20 instants with a snap of the finger, 20 thoughts in one instant, 90 instants in one thought, 9 million births and deaths in one instant. Um? Rayleigh felt that the time around her seemed to freeze for a moment, and a creepy feeling emerged in her body. A thousand cuts in an instant, Atlas' figure seemed to be out of place, moving from in front of him to behind Rayleigh. Poof! Poof! Clang! Clang! The sound of densely packed blades colliding with flesh and blood was heard, mixed with the sound of metal and iron wailing. With this kind of swordsmanship, you can already be called a great swordsman. Rayleigh is indeed not comparable to Marco. Although most of the slashes fell on him, his profound hockey knowledge prevented him from being seriously injured at all, just small wounds that were slowly healing. Otherwise, he would not have the leisure to comment on Atlas's swordsmanship here. Thanks for the compliment, but it's of no use to me. Uh huh. Atlas appeared behind Rayleigh like a ghost, and Hockey's third generation ghost, which had already been entangled in his hand, followed him like a shadow. A cold light cuts from the upper right to the lower left of Rayleigh. Cut against the cassock. If this knife were to be struck properly, Rayleigh would definitely have a huge cut from his shoulders to his waist and abdomen, but Rayleigh obviously would not be so helpless. Clang. On the path that third generation ghost must pass, a long sword appears strangely across the way. Rayleigh didn't even turn her body, but turned the hand holding the sword over blocking atlas reverse cassock slash in the opposite direction however such a sword drawing posture could not exert much power after all rayleigh only felt the back of the sword hitting his body and the force caused him to stagger and almost fall into the sea boom naturally atlas couldn't let go of such an opportunity the muscles of his right leg suddenly swelled and he kicked rayleigh on the waist with a strong sound of breaking through the air you really don't respect me as an old man at all Rayleigh, who had been kicked, took advantage of the situation to distance himself, rubbed his waist helplessly, and looked like he was asking Atlas if he knew how to respect the elderly and care for the young. I'm so sorry, an old man like you should be buried as soon as possible. Atlas is not polite at all, and he is pointed at the head of the wheat. Hey, old man, can you teach me your conqueror's winding technique? Rayleigh looked at Atlas who was cursing him into the coffin a second ago but now he was asking him to teach him about Conqueror's entanglement skills, and smiled speechlessly. Okay, you can leave Marine and become a pirate. Oh, forget it then. Hey, this Marine guy, why don't you just let me go? Rayleigh asked tentatively. It's not that he can't walk, but if the Marine in front of him catches up, he will feel very distressed. After all, he has witnessed Atlas's terrifying sight and appearance. Okay, just stand and let me chop you. Atlas remembered that the knife Rayleigh had just cut him was almost deep enough to the bone. If he hadn't had the horse charm, he would probably be lying on the ground moaning right now. That's really embarrassing, I can't do such a thing. As soon as he finished speaking, Rayleigh's figure disappeared in front of Atlas. The red light in Atlas's eyes flashed away, and a confident smile appeared on the corner of his mouth. Hey, don't underestimate my observation hockey, old man. Brother Marine, don't be overconfident in observation hockey. The voice came from behind Atlas, but he was not surprised at all. He quickly turned around and then preparedly handed the third generation ghost in his hand forward. Clang. The two were locked in a stalemate with each other, sparks constantly flying out from where the swords met. Not bad, it seems that the strength has not declined. Atlas smiled ferociously at Rayleigh. Thank you for the compliment. I'm not so old that I don't even have the strength to teach you a lesson. Clang. Seeing that they didn't get any advantage in the fight, the two of them took a step back with a tacit understanding, turned around and continued to slash. Clang. 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 
After several more confrontations, Atlas did not suffer much loss in terms of hockey or strength, but was slightly suppressed. The buds of the new era cannot withstand your destruction. Rayleigh's expression gradually became serious, and his eyes became a bit sharper. At this time, he looked more like Pluton Rayleigh, known as the Pirate King's right arm, rather than a smiling retired old man. The blade of the sword dropped naturally, and was also covered in armament color. Conquerors also slowly wrapped around it. Black and red lightning kept jumping on the blade, and a huge sense of oppression filled the space. That move again. Conqueror's entanglement. Atlas's eyes showed a solemn look, and the armament color all over his body began to flow rapidly, and the observation color was also turned to ultimate. If he wants to take this move forcefully, according to his perception, the power of this sword will definitely be far greater than the previous move. Only by personally feeling the entanglement of conquerors can he understand this technique faster. Moreover, relying on the powerful self-healing ability given to him by the horse talisman, he can recover quickly as long as it is not the kind of attack that wipes her out in an instant. As for the physical strength required, it is only a drop in the bucket for him now. Poof! Atlas's armor was suddenly torn apart after resisting for a moment. Even though he was well prepared, he predicted the impact point of the blade and covered the armor to the strongest, but under Rayleigh's knife, all the defenses only resisted for a moment and were quickly broken like paper. Although the shock effect of Conquerors is much stronger than last time, it has little impact on Atlas, who has the sheep spell and also has Conquerors. That's what it feels like, Atlas looked a little excited, he seemed to have realized some of the techniques used by Conquerors and the huge hideous wounds on his body disappeared instantly under the influence of the horse charm. Good chance. Rayleigh's eyes flashed when he saw this, and he suddenly had the idea of running away. This guy is simply a monster among monsters. It seems that no matter what kind of injury he suffers, he can heal instantly. Although he has always been suppressed by him, if this guy holds the previous even Rayleigh would suffer a big loss from the idea of replacing injuries with injuries. After all, he is now 63 years old, and his recovery ability is definitely not as good as when he was young. Hey, Marine, where are the slaves? Atlas, who had just returned to the warship, was confronted by CP Zero's questioning, which made him frown and said indifferently, Ah, I ran away, there is nothing I can do, who is the famous Pluton Rayleigh? It's out too. Run away. Who are you talking about? Rayleigh? CP Zero in the black and white mask was furious at first but then he was shocked when he heard Rayleigh's name. He was familiar with the name Rayleigh, it had only been nine years since the death of Roger, the Pirate King, and Rayleigh had not completely faded out of the sight of the strong men on the sea. The right arm of this Pirate King is still one of the top powerhouses in the world. Can you actually survive in the hands of that kind of person? Looking at Atlas walking towards the cabin, CP0 in the black and white mask couldn't help but feel a little lost. Marineford, Sengoku office. What, you said that old guy Rayleigh also appeared in this incident? Hearing the information brought back by Atlas, Sengoku had a look of rage on his face. That guy Roger used his surrender in exchange for the opportunity for everyone on Roger's ship to retire. Unexpectedly, that guy Rayleigh actually came out to cause trouble again. By the way, you didn't let those slaves go on purpose, did you? Suddenly, Sengoku looked at Atlas with a suspicious look on his face. He knew that the guy in front of him had a much wider range of knowledge than ordinary people. Hey, 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 old man Sengoku, how can you doubt me? First bled for Marine. Atlas was immediately dissatisfied, and as he spoke, he pretended to lift up his clothes to show Sengoku. Okay, okay, that's Pluton really after all, it's normal that you can't stop him. Upon seeing this, Sengoku quickly stopped Atlas's imminent indecent behavior. If someone saw it later, there might be another misunderstanding. Does he still want this old face? Dong dong dong. Dong dong dong. A slow and rhythmic knock on the door interrupted the conversation between the two. A strange look appeared on Atlas's face. His knowledge already told him who the person standing outside the door was. Come in, hey, Sengoku-san, Brother Kanos is here too. What comes into view is an image with pursed lips and a wrinkled face. Who else could it be besides Vice Admiral Kazaru? Why didn't Jia Ji come back? Sengoku looked at Kazaru who was alone and asked with some confusion. 
Brother Jia Ji is still handling follow-up matters in the Holy Land, including the docking of some matters. Atlas looked at the relaxed Kazaru and was speechless. I was fighting with that guy Rayleigh to the death, but you went to Marijoy for a walk, and you came back later than me. You are really I know how to fish. In terms of laziness, I would like to call you the strongest. Marineford, Sengoku office. Are there any celestial dragons casualties, Perusalino? Okay. It seems that only one celestial dragons was injured. I heard that the slave almost killed that celestial dragons in order to avenge his wife and children. Kazaru gestured with his index finger and thumb as he spoke, and it was indeed true. That celestial dragons would probably spend the rest of his life in a wheelchair, and it would also leave an indelible psychological shadow. That's good. Sengoku rubbed his brows with a headache. He didn't care at all whether the celestial dragons lived or died, but he was afraid that the five elders would take advantage of this. Brew brew, brew brew, as soon as he finished speaking, the phone on the desk suddenly rang. Click. This is Sengoku. Under the strange looks of several people, Sengoku picked up the phone calmly. How do you Marines do things? Sengoku. The five elders' voices came out from the phone, and they were very deep. Everyone present could hear that they were obviously suppressing their anger, and they were obviously not satisfied with Marines' performance during the riot. But, who cares? Atlas looked at Kazaru who was staring at his fingernails indifferently, probably thinking about whether to cut his fingernails later. Saint Nazarov, our Marines have already supported Marijoy as quickly as possible. Sengoku obviously didn't want to accept the five elders' approach of trashing Marine when they met, and retorted mercilessly. According to the investigation by the CP department, the mastermind of the Marijoy attack is the fishman Fisher Tiger. Now you, Marine, are responsible for agreeing on a bounty for him, sending people to hunt him down, and keeping an eye on the movements of the Fishmen Island. Remember, do whatever it takes. Also, try not to conflict with the Whitebeard Pirates. I believe you Marines should be able to grasp the scale. We don't want the balance on the sea to be broken again. World government's intelligence work was very good, and Tiger's identity was found out almost in a short time. But the attitude towards the Fishmen Island is somewhat ambiguous. The Fishmen Island has a somewhat special status. The Fishmen Island is a member of the world government, but it accepts the protection of the Whitebeard Pirates. In fact, this is not to blame the Fishmen Island. Its geographical location is too special. As the only channel leading to the Paradise and New World, it is basically plagued by pirates all year round, but it is not protected by Marine at all. Plus Neptune was good friends with Whitebeard when he was young, so he had to hang up the pirate flag of the Whitebeard pirates. We at Marine discovered that Rayleigh was also involved in this incident. Sengoku revealed the information brought back by Atlas, although the five elders must also know it, it was just enough to divert the firepower. As for Rayleigh's life and death, he did not consider it. As for Rayleigh, reactivate the bounty on him, since he doesn't care about the opportunity Roger gave them, let him live the life of a pirate again. In fact, this sentence is nonsense. As Rayleigh is the top strong man on the sea, and he has no fixed territory, he is alone and can leave whenever he wants. Marine has no temper at all for such a strong man, unless he sends two admirals to fight, to round up. However, such behavior makes no sense at all. Marine Admiral is the highest combat power in Marine. Its purpose is to deter all evils on the sea. Such strong men are scarce in the first place. They are basically nothing more than a carrot and a pit, let alone two people. Bit. Five elders almost deployed all the tasks in one call over the phone, but Atlas's name was not mentioned. It was probably because of Rayleigh's obstruction, even if the CP0 said bad things about him in front of five elders. We can't deny the fact that he fought with Rayleigh. Regarding the Whitebeard pirates, although the world government is wary of the terrifying destructive power of Whitebeard shock fruit, the most important thing is that they do not want Marine's power to rise again. Now Marine has a faint tendency to escape their control. Besides, just when Atlas thought this guy's nagging was about to end, a voice came from the phone bug again. However, Sengoku's heart skipped a beat, and a bad feeling came over him. I originally planned to hold a promotion ceremony for you in the next year or two, but in this Marijoy incident, your Marine's behavior disappointed us so much, so the five of us unanimously decided to catch Fisher Tiger when. Sengoku, you will be promoted to Marine Marshal whenever you want, that's it. 
Snap. Before Sengoku could say anything, the phone was hung up. Damn it. After hearing that the promotion time was adjusted, although he knew that this was an excuse from the five elders, Sengoku couldn't help but cursed angrily. Everyone in the office was his own people, and he didn't need to hide his emotions. A few days later, a piece of news that shocked the world was published in the World Economic News. The Holy Land of Marijoy has been attacked, although the world government issued a public announcement to accuse the fishman Fisher Tiger of his evil deeds, and remain silent about the liberation of slaves, Tiger was still regarded as a hero by many people, especially the gangsters of Fishman Street. A ship that didn't look very good was sailing slowly on the sea. The deck of the ship was filled with densely packed people, including most of the races in the world. It was Fisher Tiger and his party. At this time, Tiger had just left the sea near the Sabodi archipelago. Some people also disembarked and left along the way. Most of the people left behind are now homeless or too far away from their hometown to reach. Brother Tiger, Marine has announced your reward. Tiger heard the sound and looked around, and found that it was Bull running towards him with a brand new reward order, and he felt helpless and amused. Bull was one of several fishman slaves that Tiger rescued from Marijoy. He admired Tiger for saving him from hell, but what made Tiger a little helpless was that even though the other slaves were not hostile to him emotional, but sensitive Tiger easily felt alienated from the fish men. This kind of discrimination based on racial prejudice made Tiger a little depressed and breathless. Haha, Marine is really willing to spend money. Tiger took the reward order from Bull's hand. It was Tiger's portrait on the top, and the amount at the bottom was as high as 230 million belly. Of course, Brother Tiger, you are a great hero who rescued slaves. Bull's face showed a proud expression of course, and those who didn't know thought it was him, Bull, who was offered a reward of 230 million belly. What are your plans for the future, Bull? Tiger didn't echo Bull's excitement and instead asked Bull about his future plans. I don't know, but I want to follow you, Boss Tiger. Bull said with some excitement that for him, Tiger was the one who pulled him from hell to earth. The moment he escaped from Marijoy, he had already decided to follow the man in front of him. I want to form a pirate group, first help these escaped people go home, and then fight against the slave trade on the sea. Before Bull could ask, Tiger said with determination. The painful slave life in his life made Tiger hate human trafficking very much. This attack on Marijoy seemed to make him see the direction of his life. Marineford, Recruit Camp, Zephyr Office. Teacher Zephyr, how are you doing lately? Do you have any good ideas? There were only Zephyr, Shuzo and Atlas in the office at this time. It was a relatively private meeting, so Atlas asked half-jokingly. Fortunately, even the best young talent pales in comparison to you. Zephyr looked satisfied, looking at the epaulette of Atlas's cloak of justice with some relief. I didn't expect you to be promoted so quickly. It's time for the vice admiral sequence. After the Marijoy incident ended, Atlas was successfully promoted to vice admiral of the headquarters without any twists and turns, although the five elders paid a little attention to him because of the previous interception of Rayleigh. But Atlas didn't do anything extraordinary, and Sengoku had already disgusted Marine once, so there was no need to add fuel to the fire with a mere vice admiral award. It might even be counterproductive and make Marine develop a rebellious mentality. Shuzo on the side also echoed when he heard this, Mr. Zephyr has been using you as their role model in the recruiting camp. Now in the eyes of those recruits, you have to surpass Akainu and the others as monsters. Then they are almost tired of hearing my name, Atlas teased, but he didn't expect Zephyr to think so highly of him. Ha ha ha. Don't listen to this brat's nonsense. Do you have any plans after returning to the headquarters this time? The Sengoku Admiral arranged for me to be stationed at the Sabodi Archipelago. Atlas did not hide anything from Zephyr, and these were not major secrets. And although Zephyr had retreated behind the scenes, he still had the authority as the former Admiral. As long as he was willing, he could naturally find out about such small things. Stationing at Sabodi. Logically speaking, the base commander of Sabodi Archipelago has the rank of Rear Admiral. Why would Sengoku send you, a Vice Admiral, there? Zephyr is obviously a little confused about Sengoku's arrangement. After all, he has already stopped caring about Marine's affairs, so he doesn't pay too much attention to the situation in the world. Ah, 
Sengoku Admiral wants to prevent those pirates from flooding into the New World and avoid increasing the strength of the three major pirate groups. Atlas stretched his slightly stiff muscles, couldn't help but groaned in comfort, and then explained casually. When Zephyr saw this, they did not say anything to stop them. The three of them did not have a hierarchical superior subordinate relationship, so the atmosphere was relatively relaxed. By the way, when will you take away the recruit you asked me to train specially? It just so happens that you have reached the vice admiral level now. It's time to form your own fleet. Cyrus? Atlas scratched his head in embarrassment. He seemed to have almost forgotten him. After inviting Cyrus to Marine a year ago, Atlas asked him to return to his headquarters with the army and even called him personally. Please ask Zephyr to arrange for him to come to the recruitment camp for special training. Atlas was very optimistic about Cyrus, otherwise he wouldn't have gone to such great lengths to recruit him into Marine. Teacher Zephyr, what do you think of Cyrus? His progress should not be slow, I am very optimistic about him. Strictly speaking, Cyrus is not a Marine from an Orthodox recruiting camp, but don't underestimate the recruiting camp. Everyone here must go through strict identity and qualification examinations, and it is impossible for anyone to enter casually. Cyrus can barely be regarded as an auditor, so he does not need to go through the graduation examination like those ordinary recruits. As long as Atlas gives an order, he can directly board the ship, and he can be regarded as an awe a direct descendant of Truss. Compared to the soldiers of the same period, he is very good, his swordsmanship level is very high, he has mastered the six styles well, it will take some time for his physical fitness to reach the level of awakening hockey. Zephyr briefly and comprehensively commented on the current Cyrus. The biggest difference between Cyrus and Marine from the same period in the recruitment camp is combat experience. He is a man who came out of the gladiatorial arena and has been serving as the defense of Dressrosa, so he is very familiar with combat. The sensitivity and intuition are unmatched by recruits. At this time, the recruits should be training on the school field. Do you want to give the recruits a lesson? It just so happens that they can meet you, the legendary monster senior. Okay. Seeing Zephyr's slightly expectant eyes, Atlas readily agreed. Anyway, his affairs are not particularly busy now. Recruit Camp Field. The two figures are constantly fighting. The use of finger pistol and iron body among the six postures is dazzling. Waves of air are constantly rolling between the two. Finger pistol. Iron body. Uh. Poof. Finally, iron body added another defeat. The instructor on the side saw the situation in the field and immediately announced loudly, Winner, Cyrus. Cyrus in the field showed a look of excitement from the bottom of his heart when he heard this. He seemed to be born for gladiatorial combat and every victory made him feel happy from the bottom of his heart. However, he has joined Marine for a year now, and it seems that he has not seen the shadow of that man until now. Cyrus even sometimes guesses that the guy may have forgotten him in Marineford. How's it going? Are you satisfied with his progress? The Zephyr trio, who had been around the school field for a long time, had a panoramic view of the entire battle. Cyrus's performance also made Zephyr very satisfied. Except for the Tempest Kick and Moonwalk, which I haven't mastered yet, I'm very proficient in using the other four moves. Moreover, this group shouldn't be new to the camp at the same time, right? Atlas' eyes were so vicious that he could tell Cyrus's mastery of the six movements almost at a glance. But you have reached the qualifications to join my fleet, Atlas added. Okay, today is the time for you to go to Sabodi to take office, Sengoku said, looking at Atlas who was getting ready to go. Remember, don't let a supernova enter the new world. Whatever you do in Sabodi, if something goes wrong let me bear it. No problem, I guarantee that those pirates can't even touch the edge of new world, Atlas assured, patting his chest. By the way, don't offend the celestial dragons, I know you're upset with them. No problem, you can't afford to hide if you can't offend me. Looking at Sengoku's suspicious eyes, Atlas replied unhappily, Okay, okay don't you know who I am? As soon as these words came out, Sengoku became even more worried about Atlas. If Atlas killed the celestial dragons, even he wouldn't be able to hold it back. However, Atlas did not lie to Sengoku. Although he looked down upon the celestial dragons, at this stage, he did not have the absolute strength to resist the world government. He was not the kind of fool who resisted without thinking. Okay, that one will leave first. 
the warships are waiting for me at the port. Seeing that Sengoku still seemed to want to talk nonsense, Atlas quickly resigned and left. The warships prepared for him by the headquarters are already anchored in the port. Due to the establishment of the New World Marine Base, a large number of Marines have been assigned to garrison in the New World. Therefore, the number of warships parked at the headquarters port is not that many, and it is even less comparable to when Atlas first arrived at Marineford. Atlas Vice Admiral. Here, just when Atlas rushed to the port, Cyrus's voice was uploaded from a warship. This was a marine giant standard warship. Atlas had not considered building his own warship for the time being. This is not to be stingy with money, these are all things Marine can reimburse, and Atlas does not need to save money for Marine. The main reason is that he does not need special warships for the time being. Anyway, he is stationed in the Sabodi archipelago not far from the headquarters, and Atlas feels that even customized warships are too mediocre so he may postpone the consideration of warships, question. Hey, Cyrus, you are dressed very smartly today. Cyrus, who was standing on the deck, was wearing a very ordinary marine uniform. His appearance had changed from that of Dressrosa. His current military rank was seaman recruit, and he had no meritorious service. Atlas was not easily promoted, anyway. With Cyrus's strength, it's easy to catch some small pirates. The standard configuration of a warship is about a thousand ordinary marine soldiers and several hundred elite marine soldiers. The subordinate adjutant is served by a passerby colonel with a beard. The troop configuration on the ship can be said to be very even but not outstanding, but Atlas will definitely find time to personally recruit a few confidants to his ship. Smoker has been booked by Atlas for a long time, he had graduated from the recruitment training camp last year. His title at that time seemed to be a major, he was supposed to be a lieutenant colonel. However, this guy openly disobeyed during the graduation trial. Military order, this led to a poor final evaluation, which directly affected the final award. Atlas Vice Admiral, can we leave now? Have all the people on the ship been accounted for? Report to Vice Admiral, personnel and supplies have been inventoried, requesting instructions. Okay, let's set off, target. Sabo di Archipelago, Atlas nodded slightly, turned to look at the bearded man, by the way, your name is Majors, right? Even before departure, Sengoku had already sent him the information about the main officers on the warship, so he still had some impression of this bearded man. Yes, Naval Headquarters Colonel Majors reports to Sir. Majors saluted on the spot with a serious expression. Majors didn't know much about Atlas, the young Vice Admiral. His most profound memory was that Shichibukai Crocodile, who had just been established by world government, was captured by him and sent to impel down a year ago. After experiencing the baptism of the New World, the rising star of the Marine Corps became more powerful and relied on a large number of military achievements to jump into the rank of Marine Vice Admiral. It can be said that this is a monster Marine. After learning that he was assigned to Atlas subordinate, Majors was still a little uneasy. After all, most powerful people would have some quirks that were a little different from ordinary people. Fortunately, after a short period of contact, Majors still had a very good sense of Atlas. The Sabo di Archipelago is not very far from the naval headquarters, it is actually the largest mangrove tree in the world. The Yalch mangrove, since the roots of the tree are always exposed above the water, the Sabo di Archipelago is formed. The biggest feature of the Sabo di Archipelago is the natural resin secreted by the roots of the argument tree due to respiration, forming the unique bubble culture of Sabo di, and it is also the only way to the new world. Therefore, this place is also called the Island of Failure and the Island of Starting Again by pirates. Sabo di Archipelago is mainly composed of 79 numbered trees, and there are obvious regional divisions. Atlas's destination this time is areas 60 to 69 which are the main base of marine and the entrance to world government. From the 1st to the 29th, there are mainly human trafficking meetings and human auctions, collectively known as the illegal zone, where almost all criminals, including pirates, gather. Numbers 30 to 39 are the essence of Sabodi's unique bubble culture and a must-see for tourists, Soap Bubble Park. Numbers 40 to 49 are mainly tourist areas and specialty shops. It is a relatively peaceful place and is suitable for tourists to visit. Areas 50 to 59 are mainly areas where shipbuilders and coders are located. 
Although the level of shipbuilding technology may be slightly inferior to that of the Seven Waters City, the unique coating technology is the key for pirates to go to the New World. So this is also the favorite place for pirates to visit. As for number 70 to number 79, there is not much to say. The area provides accommodation. As for whether there are other services, Atlas does not know. It can be said that areas 1 to 29 are areas that Atlas focuses on. Even if they face the threat of the slave fleet, most pirates are fearless masters. Although, most pirates look quite shabby, but some celestial dragons like to collect pirate captains, so, if there is a market, there will be demand. Sabodi looks quite peaceful. Atlas looked at the huge Arcuaman mangrove looming in the distance and praised. He originally thought they would be greeted by a baptism of cannonballs. Vice Admiral, don't just take it at face value. We are going directly to Marine's station. It is a bit far from the illegal zone, so the news there cannot be transmitted here. Majors on the side twitched the corner of his mouth and explained in detail. Majors is an old Marine in the headquarters and has some knowledge of the situation in Sabaudi, so he will not be fooled by the apparent tranquility. Really, I think it's better to let him be quiet for a while on such a beautiful island. Majors was a little confused when he heard Atlas's big words, and was obviously unaware of what Atlas was going to do next. Sure enough, there are always countless filth and sins hidden beneath the beautiful things in this world. Atlas on the warship has quietly covered the entire Sabodi land. This glamorous island seems to be experiencing various violent crimes and human trafficking all the time. Especially areas 1 to 29, which are known as lawless zones. It's really hard to see. Let's eliminate some of the sins first. As soon as he finished speaking, Majors next to him felt a powerful force of intimidation erupting from Atlas. Although it was not directed at him, the momentum that just escaped made him lose consciousness for a while. Conqueror's hockey. Ha 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 ha. I am a big pirate with a bounty of 70 million. It is your honor to come to your place to eat. How dare you ask me for money? In a certain tavern, a bald man with a ferocious look and an indescribable appearance was holding a large sword on his back and looking at the owner of the tavern with an extremely arrogant expression. Surrounded by people gathered in a circle to watch the fun, as well as crooked looking pirates, they seemed to be the crew of the bald man. Hey, old man, our captain is Nick the Evil One, don't you want to die? Ha ha ha. What a novelty, there are actually people asking pirates for drink money. Everyone nearby was shocked when they heard this. Evil ghost, Nick has become famous recently, and he especially likes to kill his enemies. They also destroyed a marine's marine base in North Blue. Such a notorious pirate was unexpectedly encountered by the tavern owner. Thinking of this, the people watching could not help but cast pity on the tavern owner. Haha. <laughs> How dare you call yourself a big pirate out of a mere 70 million pirates? The tavern owner was obviously not intimidated by Nick. As someone who could open a tavern in an illegal area, how could he be afraid of a pirate with a mere 70 million bounty on his head? This owner was obviously a ruthless character. How irritating. Nick looked at the boss's mocking look, veins popped out in his arms, and he raised the sword high on his back, pretending to cut the boss in half with one strike. Haha. <laughs> you are a pirate from North Blue, right? The boss remained unmoved and instead asked about an unrelated matter. Huh? So what? The falling knife suddenly stopped, and the strong sharpness directly drew a bloodline on the tavern owner's forehead. Joker. I am Joker's man. After the tavern owner finished speaking, he stood there and looked at Nick with a smile, as if he was extremely convinced by the name. Joker? Who is he? Have you heard of him? Never heard of it, maybe he's just a businessman from North Blue? Ha 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 ha. Hey, hey. The people watching the demon pirates seemed to be very afraid of this, Joker. When the people around heard the tavern owner announce a name that was a bit unfamiliar to them, they immediately started talking. However, they looked surprised after seeing the expressions of Nick and the others. It was obvious that Nick and the others knew the so-called evil ghost, Jokers. Nick and the others looked at the confident-looking tavern owner and were suddenly in a dilemma. Naturally, he had heard of the name, Joker, he could be said to be a big boss in the North Blue Underground world. Although he had not entered the Grand Line, Nick and the other side's men fought against each other. As for the result, you can get an idea of it just by looking at Nick's fearful expression. Forget it this time, just treat it like our boss invited you. 
The owner of the tavern is obviously a good person, and he knows that no matter how resounding the reputation of Joker is in the underground world of North Blue, this is the grand line after all. The sky is high and the emperor is far away, after all, the only life is his own. If the pirate in front of him becomes angry on the spot, it would be unjust to kill him. Even if Joker helps him get revenge in the end, what's the practical significance? Okay, I'll show favor to Joker today. First mate, bring me the drink money. Although Nick is known as the evil devil, he is obviously not a brainless person. When he saw the tavern owner handing him a step to show his dignity, he immediately followed the donkey downhill. As soon as these words came out, the people around who had planned to watch the excitement were immediately disappointed, and at the same time they became extremely curious about the joker in the tavern owner's mouth. Although Nick's bounty of 70 million is not uncommon in the grand line, this joker is obviously not that easy to suppress an opponent with just a name. Just when everyone was about to leave with a look of resentment on their faces, a terrifying aura enveloped them, and the world seemed to turn into a colorless picture. Plop. Plop. All the pirates in the tavern fell to the ground like dumplings. This, the people who were left watching the fun were at a loss. Just feeling a strong wind blowing in their faces, the pirates who had been shouting just now foamed at the mouth and fell unconscious. What's more, some of them were bleeding from their orifices and made no sound at all. Hey, 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 are you blind? Didn't you see such a big living person over there? In the illegal zone of Area 2, an old man with a sharp mouth and monkey cheeks was arrogantly directing a group of thugs in black suits behind him. In front of him was a frightened looking young girl about 17 or 8 years old. It's such a pity that I was targeted by this guy. Who is that guy? Silence. This guy is the man behind the largest population auction house in Sabaody. It is said that he has the celestial dragons as his backer. Tisk, tisk, it seems that this girl can't escape today. Hearing the comments from the people around her, the girl who was already frightened cried even more, as if she had foreseen her future life as a slave. But isn't she a tourist? Behind the middle-aged man with a sharp mouth and monkey cheeks, a burly-looking man seemed a little unbearable. Ha ha ha. Haddon. Why are you so kind-hearted at this time? Think about your wife and daughter who are bedridden. The burly man seemed to have been poked at some kind of pain point. His fists were clenched tightly and his joints were a little white from the exertion. It's really top-notch. I'm sure Celestial Dragons will like it. Marijoy is in short supply of slaves recently, he 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 he. Uh-huh. Before the sharp-mouthed middle-aged man came forward, he felt as if someone had hit him on the back of his head, and streams of warm liquid flowed out of his ears, nose and throat. Bang. The same scene is constantly playing out in Sabodi Archipelago as if there is an eye of God overlooking the entire Sabodi archipelago, and the evildoers are punished by God almost at the same time. Grand Line, Area 51, Sabodi Archipelago. Huh? This smell. A young man dressed in shabby clothes and with gray-green hair was sneaking around nearby. His name was Gilder Tetsolo, he was in Sabodi, just off Marijoy. For Tetsolo, the so-called Holy Land Marijoy is a nightmare that he never wants to remember in his life, but the owner who just enveloped the land of Sabodi seems to be the person who saved him in Marijoy before. Forget it, let's inquire later. The main goal now is to find a ship and get out of this damn place. No matter how beautiful the Sabodi archipelago is, Tetsolo feels very uncomfortable with the Celestial Dragon's back garden, which always reminds him of his former slave life. Although he doesn't know what to do now, his goal is very clear, and that is to make money. If only he had money, he wouldn't have let Stella be bought by the Celestial Dragons. If only he had money, the Celestial Dragons want to please him too. If only he had money, his experience would not be so tragic. Money. It is the most beautiful and useful thing in the world. Tetsolo already has an almost crazy desire for money. In his opinion, all his misfortunes are attributed to poverty. Vice Admiral, what are you? Looking at the slowly approaching coast of Sabaody, Majors was a little puzzled by Atlas's behavior just now. The conquerors have stunned most of the criminals. You can lead the soldiers to bring those scum over, Atlas added lazily, if they are still alive. Can conquerors be able to do this? Majors felt his throat was a little dry and swallowed subconsciously. 
In his mind, isn't conquerors only capable of cleaning up the mess? In fact, it's not surprising that Majors thinks so. As a Marine colonel, it is difficult to enter the level of conqueror's hockey owner. He often only has a partial understanding of conquerors, not to mention that some conqueror's owners only regard it as a qualification, symbol, and knows nothing about its power. Hey, you can strike accurately by combining your knowledge, knowledge, and color. This is very easy. In fact, this is also the last time that Atlas suffered two entangled slashes from conquerors from Rayleigh. Atlas's use of conquerors has become more flexible. Otherwise, such a large scale precision strike will easily cause accidental injuries. Yes. Vice Admiral, Majors quickly took the order, completely ignoring Atlas's showing off, and led a group of soldiers on the warship to land on Sabaody in an orderly manner. The soldiers were all excited. They also heard the conversation between Atlas Vice Admiral Colonel Crane Majors, and naturally they knew that this was a good thing where they took all the credit, and they were all gearing up. I didn't expect that old guy Rayleigh is not in Sabaody, did he go to Nine Snake Island? Looking at the backs of the Marines leaving, Atlas murmured to himself that he originally wanted to have a fight with Rayleigh, but he didn't expect to find Rayleigh even if he dug three feet with his knowledge. According to Atlas's speculation, it was Rayleigh who discovered the identities of the three Hancock sisters on Nine Snake Island, and escorted them back together with Shaggy. What a pity. Lawless Zones 1 to 29. The pirates all over the place almost all had the same characteristics. Their eyes were white and they were foaming at the mouth. A few of them were bleeding from all their orifices, as if they had been hit hard on the head. This is what the Marines saw after arriving at the Sabaody Archipelago. This is, evil ghost, Nick, with a bounty of 70 million, unconscious but not dead. Huh, butcher, Augustus, the bounty is 90 million. This guy is a murderous pirate. Most of the bounty is for slaughtering civilians. Hey, this guy is the crying hunter, Kapani. I heard that this guy is a psycho and his brain is a little abnormal. As the Marines checked step by step, a large number of named pirates were recognized, and the unconscious ones were all pirates and some human traffickers. This precise strike made the Marines present have a deep understanding of the young man. The chief admired him even more sincerely. This is really unbelievable. Majors almost lost his mind. Is this level of blow really something that only a vice admiral can achieve? He heard that this monster vice admiral doesn't seem to have a title yet. Although Akainu and the three of them have a wide range of AoE skills because of Lobia, covering the entire island for precise strikes like this. Well, Majors actually doesn't know if they can do it, but it does not affect the scene in front of him, for his strong visual impact. In fact, Atlas' current strength is indeed a little worse than the three major monsters' vice admiral, but fighting them for ten days and ten nights is not a problem, and it is still unclear who will win in the end, but getting the title is not such an easy thing. There are only two general titles of vice admiral. One is the elite vice admiral of naval headquarters, which is usually a veteran vice admiral with sufficient merit, and the other is the admiral candidate. It is almost certain that the admiral candidate will become the admiral. As long as the strength and military merit are sufficient, the Admiral is known as the Marine's highest combat power. In the final analysis, strength will speak for itself. For example, more than ten years later, it was clear that Guillaume and Cake had enough qualifications to become Marine Admirals, but in the end they filled the Admiral vacancy through world conscription. Either they were not strong enough, or the five elders wanted to check and balance Marine, so they deliberately found them. Two people who are not from the Marine faction. According to Atlas's conjecture, the most likely possibility is the former. In this world, the strong are respected after all, and only enough force can determine your status. Hurry up, there's someone here who's not dead. What? The handcuffs are not enough. Come here quickly and get a rope. There's no rope anymore, forget it. Just cut off the hands and feet and take them back. Yes. Maybe they didn't expect their commander to make such an astonishing move. The handcuffs on the warship simply couldn't meet the needs of these prisoners. Majors was also a decisive man and directly ordered the remaining prisoners' hands and feet to be cut off, so that they would not wake up and try to escape. Marine's efficiency was very good, and he quickly dragged a group of tied-up pirates to the coast where the warship was docked, waiting for Atlas's military order. It's so troublesome, I didn't expect that there are quite a lot of pirates alive. 
Atlas looked at the pirates who were almost dragged by the marines and curled his lips in disgust, obviously not satisfied with the effect of his conquerors. But this is also because Atlas is too harsh. Basically, how could a pirate with a huge bounty die on the spot by his conqueror's long-range attack? Vice Admiral, how should we deal with these pirates? Check it, and then. Kill it. You don't have to throw it to impel down to waste food. 